There we go. That's better. That's fixed. Okay, week 20. All right, let's start with prayer. Let's close our eyes. Hands together. Close our eyes. All right, let's pray. Timothy, let's pray. No, leave the shoe. Timothy, leave the shoe. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Uh, thank you for this morning. I pray that we'll be able to learn a little bit about the Bible today and have some fun. And we just pray, Lord, that you bless uh, the children here and help them to grow to be uh, godly men and women. Uh, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Say, amen. 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 Okay. What's the three rules? Sit quietly. Pay attention. Right. Two eyes on me. Two eyes. Two eyes up here. Yeah, two eyes up here. And the third one is Simon. Yeah, I don't think you want to say something. Thank you. Very good. Put your hand up if you want to say something, okay? So no calling out. So you sit quietly. If you want to say something, put your hand up. If you get if the bishop says, yes, you, then you can say something. Otherwise you sit quietly. Okay. Oh, attendance. Oh, I skipped that one. Oh, what's going on here? Attendance. We're up to week 20, so you guys get another gem because this is four weeks and nobody's missed one here. So I'm going to get you guys another gem for your badge. Let's have a look. You stay seated and Elizabeth's going to help me. So we've got five. There you go. Are you going to do it? Two. I'll help you. Oh, you have Elizabeth. Right, Mommy can do Jeremiah's. Hey, okay, we'll put yours in yours. So this is drum number five. Because you guys haven't missed any. I'm just going to shove it all the way through. There you go. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> That's your little reward for coming to Bible Club. Okay, I've got the gems in, there you go. Now you have five. Okay, Jeremiah, go sit down, please. Okay, today, I'll we'll just let Timothy get his gem. Oh, no, I haven't. Yeah. It's my own oh. <laughs> okay, so every time you come four times, we'll give you another one. <gasps> Look at you. How many is there? One, two, three, four, five. Hey? Eh? All right, now you're going to sit quietly for me, right? Pay attention. Okay, book number 22. Look at the name of this book in the Bible. Very interesting title. Song of Solomon. Did you know that there's a book in the Bible that is a song written by Solomon? And it was written about one, well, his wife at the time. I think at the time... It was when he only had one wife, and then later on, he was very naughty and he took on many more wives. Okay, so let's sit quietly. Let's not swing our legs like that. Okay. Who remembers who Solomon is? You remember who Solomon is? Yeah. So King Solomon, if you remember, he was the one that had the dream and he asked for wisdom. And he wrote many of the Proverbs 
His father, David, was the one that wrote a lot of the Psalms. Remember when we looked at the book of Psalms and we learned the action songs? Solomon wrote the Proverbs, but after he wrote Ecclesiastes, which is the one that we learned about last week, he also wrote the Song of Solomon. And the Song of Solomon is a story, or is a, is a song about a love song. Whoops. It's a love song. Hey, hello. Come have a seat. So Song of Solomon is a love song between a husband and wife. And when you read through the Song of Solomon, there's a lot of beautiful imagery. You know, because God in the beginning, God in the beginning created man and woman, didn't he? So who created marriage? What do you think, Simon? That's right. So Jesus, Jesus created marriage. He created man and woman in the very beginning. And he said, for, you know, this cause, the mother, man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and twain they shall be one flesh. So Solomon, in, under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, spoke this song, singing about this love song between a man and his wife. And when you um, read through that book, you, you see a lot of the imagery, a lot of the beauty of, you know, the relationship between a man and a wife. But the world today wants to break that image, don't they? They want to put, you know, a man and a man, you know, ugh, or a woman and a woman, ugh, you know. They want to destroy God's image of, you know, a man and the woman, this beautiful image of a husband and a wife. You know, like everybody should. Everybody should have a mummy and a daddy. That's the ideal. Unfortunately, not everyone has a mummy and a daddy, you know, at home, because not everyone followed God's plan. But if they did, you know, it would be much better for the children. So not only is the Song of Solomon uh, a book in the Bible about a relationship between a man and a woman, a man and his wife, but it's also a picture of how Jesus feels about the church and how he feels about us. Because the, the relationship between a man and a wife is a picture of how Jesus Christ has a relationship with his church. So just like a man ought to love his wife and a woman has reverence and adoration for her husband, the same Jesus loves the church. He loves us. He sacrificed himself for us. And, you know, uh, we ought to love Jesus as a woman loves her husband. So the song really is about love, isn't it? And that's why our verse today, from the Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 4, says, He brought me to the banqueting house, what is the banqueting house? The banqueting house is where you get to eat a lot of food, you get to celebrate, like a party. So see, he brought me to the banqueting house and his banner over me was love. So, so that's what the song is about. It's a love song between a husband and wife. So let's read it together. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 4. He brought me to the banqueting house and his banner over me was love. Song of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 4. Okay. So like I said, just as the Song of Solomon is a love story between a man and a wife, it also pictures Jesus' love for us. And he showed his love for us by dying on the cross. You know, he lived a perfect life. He didn't sin once and he did it so that he could die for us. The ultimate love story. Coming, God himself coming to this world as a man, living a perfect life, sacrificing himself so that he could be with you. So not only does God sing about his love for us, but he also showed his love toward us in that he sent his son Jesus Christ to die for our sins. So we just need to believe on him. If we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, we can be saved. We can receive the love of God that he showed us on the cross. 